Hi there, my name is Ian Middleton, I am a travel and landscape photographer and this is one of my photography tips. Now today I am going to show you how to edit photos using Adobe Camera Raw. Now if you're not shooting raw then start right now. Uh, anyone who tells you that shooting in RAW is not necessary and that shooting in JPEG and taking it straight out of camera is best, then, well, I don't like to say that they're wrong, but, well, in my opinion, they are wrong. For me, shoot, if you shoot in JPEG, then that's the equivalent of the days when you shot in film. If you imagine that when you took a photo in film and then you got it processed and you got your prints back and then you threw away the negative and just kept the print, well, that's pretty much the same as shooting in JPEG. Because what happens is the camera initially captures the photo in the raw format. And if you just choose to save the JPEG, then it will save the JPEG, strip out all that information and delete the raw data. So trust me when I tell you that shooting in raw is best. And basically when you shoot in raw, the camera saves every single bit of data that it has captured. And then you can process and edit that photo yourself if you shoot in JPEG, then the camera will do the processing for you automatically and you have no control whatsoever. And then you simply end up with the equivalent of a print. Yes, you can edit the JPEG, but the, much of the information has already been stripped out and deleted. And once you start editing a JPEG, you then start to destroy the quality. But with the raw file, you've got much more to work with. Okay, so um editing a raw file is not as daunting as some people may think it is it's actually quite easy you've got uh the the best i mean there are many pieces of software out there to fo to edit um raw files even the the camera manufacturer uh the manufacturer for the camera that you have will also provide some raw editing software but Adobe Camera Raw is probably, I would say, the best. And if you have Adobe Lightroom or if you have Adobe Photoshop, then you can use it as a plugin. So I'm using Adobe Photoshop here and I'm using Adobe Camera Raw as the plugin. And I'm going to show you what you can do with it now. Okay, so let's take this photo here. Okay, this is a photo I shot at a place called St. Thomas Church in Slovenia. It's a fantastic scene. Now I've opened it up in RAW here. Now of course it looks a bit flat. Well the RAW files do because basically the idea of the RAW file is to capture as much detail as possible and when you open it usually it looks a bit flat. Now the default profile here is Adobe Standard. Okay? So the first thing option you have is to choose a different profile. You can keep it as Adobe Standard and just work away and edit yourself or you can try one of the presets to see how it looks. You have a choice here of Adobe Color here, Adobe Landscape. I usually find personally though that Adobe Landscape brings out too many unnatural colors. Sometimes it looks good. I often try it to see how it looks and sometimes it looks good but more often than not like it's done here it's it's made the colors look a bit too sickly you know it's too much so you've got okay Adobe Portrait if you're shooting portraits Adobe Standard as we've just seen or Adobe Vivid okay uh, and of course Adobe Monochrome if you want to convert it to black and white I usually either choose Adobe Color or Adobe Vivid. It depends on this type of image I'm using. So I'm going to for this one choose Adobe Image because I really want to bring out the the colors and make this image very punchy because it was a very punchy scene. As you can see the the um, the sun rays were bursting through the clouds here and and this is what I want to bring out in this image. Okay, so that's the first step. Now here you've got white balance. 
it will default to the white balance that you shot it at or here you can change it now there's nothing wrong with changing white balance some people might cry out that oh this is fake you should do it in camera well white balance is actually software so it makes no difference if you change it if you set it in camera or if you change it here in the Adobe Camera Raw it makes no difference whatsoever it's the same as changing it in your camera okay now here you can choose yeah uh, you can see that I've I've shot it uh, I shot it uh, this on a cloudy setting I think you can set it to shade to warm it up more uh, daylight to cool it down but I'm gonna leave it as shot because I shot this uh, on a cloudy white balance setting to warm it up and for me this is enough if I go too warm I'll start to lose the greens down here now down here you have your first batch of settings okay here you can adjust the exposure okay now as always try to get the exposure right in camera um, and usually here if you need to make some fine adjustments the great thing about this is that you can actually make much finer adjustments to your exposure than you can in camera so here you have the option to maybe do some fine adjustments to your exposure if you need to I don't need to in this case the next one is your contrast adjustment now this is a very blunt adjustment so I never use it too much I personally usually go anywhere between 0 to 10 I'm gonna maybe for this case take it to plus 5 now this is a great tool highlights now obviously up here this was uh, an extremely bright area here because the Sun was bursting through the clouds now if I had exposed to bring this out then my foreground would have been too dark now I had a, a four stop neutral density graduated filter on my camera when I took this but you can see that the brightness was still very extreme so um, I still had to push the exposure to the right a bit to make sure that my foreground wasn't too dark but I also knew that there was a, I would retain enough detail here that using the highlights tool I could bring that back so there we go yeah another option I'll show you a bit later um, for pulling back highlights or darkening down the skies is the the graduated filter tool up here I'll show you that in a minute but for now let's look at this yeah so I'm going to take down the highlights here I'm going to pull that back so I've pulled back some of the detail here okay next tool is your shadows tool now I don't really need this but you have the option then so if I wanted to bring out the shadows in this in the image then here we go I can pull this up or if I wanted to darken the shadows I can pull it the other way okay well I'll put that back to zero for this picture now the whites the whites will push the histogram off to the right here so the whites as it says will brighten the white or the highlights uh, part of your image so you can see that it's probably you can best see down here on the church if we zoom in uh, you can best see how it's bringing out all the whiter lighter parts of the image uh, I don't need that right now but I'll show you how we can use that in another picture in a minute okay. Let's zoom that back out. and also the same with the blacks we, if you notice now I'm darkening the shadow areas the darker areas with this tool and you can see on the histogram up here it's moving to the left so you can see if we push the blacks we move the histogram to the left if I push the white tools up we move the histogram to the right okay. but on this picture I don't need to make any adjustments here because you can see by my histogram that my shadows run right to the very left and they're not clipped and there's no gaps here 
and the same with my highlights or my whites they run nicely to the edge here and they're not too far off and there's no gap but as I say I'll show you in a minute with another photo what we can do with that so I'm going to leave that alone okay now let's zoom into the church here so I can show you the texture tool this is a new tool and it's actually really good the texture tool well it works really well on buildings uh, again with all these tools if you push it too far it doesn't look too good but if we just make some small adjustments here maybe up to 20 we can see if we pull that back down to zero okay pull that up to 20 you can see it's really bringing out a bit of the detail on the on the building here so this is a great tool but with all of these tools try not to overdo it I usually don't go much more than 20 30 at the most depending on the image but um, that's about it the clarity tool if we look for the extreme you can see it's a bit like sharpening it's a bit like the sharpening tool it sharpens areas around the image and as it says on the tin brings out the clarity I may bring this up to about 10 uh, here we go that's about right now the dehaze tool this is also relatively new we can basically as it says if, there, if the scene is a bit hazy we can dehaze it a bit so it's really good for landscape images like this where in the distance you've got a bit of haze and so really just bring this up again you know I don't take it up too much maybe I'll take it up to about 14 in this case yeah vibrance now vibrance and saturation there's a big difference between them saturation will boost the colors across the whole of your image whereas vibrance will boost the colors that are not so vivid so the more muted colors it will it will help to bring out those so it's a much better tool and I use this more often than I would use the saturation tool okay so in this case again I would take vibrance up maybe to about 10 there we go now I could show you before and after that's before that's after so already we've made a huge difference to our image now there's a whole bunch of other tools here as well uh, here in this detail section you can adjust sharpening Okay, the okay. So the first one obviously is the amount of sharpening. Now I have it defaulted to twenty-five. I find that's enough. But this is a very useful thing to know. This masking tool. If you hold down the Alt button, and you move this tool, see what happens there. All these areas in white are the areas that will be sharpened. And all the areas that are black are the areas that will be untouched. So if we move this back, you can see more white. This basically, if we have this on zero, that means that the whole image, every single part of the image will be sharpened. And this is not always good because if you've got a lot of blue sky, it will sharpen the blue sky and it will just look nasty. So you can actually mask off areas of your image to show that the that you don't want to sharpen these areas right? so the more we go up so if we take it up to a hundred basically just these areas are going to be sharpened so I here we go for this image I'm going to take it to about there so I'm really sharpening most of my foreground my church and some areas of, of cloud up here so this is a really good tool down here you've got noise reduction if you shoot at high ISO I didn't do it here but if you shoot at high ISO and you've got noise then you can adjust you can reduce some of the noise here so this is another good tool 
Okay. These basically uh, you can individually adjust the saturation for individual colors, luminance and hue. Uh, split tone in here. I always have this ticked by default so this will automatically remove any chromatic aberration you've got. Uh, if you want to if you've shot with a wide angle and you want to correct any barrel distortion things like this here then you can click to enable this usually it should automatically find what camera is what camera lens that you've used sorry and uh, it will automatically set it accordingly uh, if you've also if you've got some vignetting then you can get rid of the vignetting using this tool I will disable that here you have manual settings so you can do everything automatically uh, everything manually adjust the distortion adjust the chromatic aberration in and here you have much more flexibility and control same down here with the vignetting okay. uh, here are some other effects you can add grain if you want to or you can add vignetting um, and these are basically the tools that are really important along here up here this set of tools here now okay as standard this is the zoom tool quite simply uh, the hand tool so if for example um, zoom in to 100% use the hand tool to move the image around to find the part of the scene that you want to work on okay take that back. The, the tools that are really important up here, uh, the crop tool, this is important. So here you can set your constraints here, uh, your aspect ratio for example. So if you set 16 to 9 then it will give you uh, a crop so you can then crop in this particular aspect ratio. Okay. Let's uh, um, up here we've got a spot removal tool if you've got spots anywhere in the image you can you can uh, you know you can choose to heal or to clone an area so I don't usually use this in Adobe Camera Raw I usually use this in Photoshop but the options there you've got a red eye removal tool if you're shooting people um, an adjustment brush and graduated filter tool. Now first let's look at the graduated filter tool. This is very useful. The graduated filter tool emulates the neutral density graduated filter that you would put on your camera. Now as I said for this image I have already put one on. But even if you've put one on you could still use this tool to add a little bit of extra um, graduation to your image but the advantage to this tool is that not only can you stop down the exposure you can also use all of these features with it so you can uh, so let's go for example if we hold down the shift button click and pull down we, now we choose our area of graduation so the great thing about this is that we can make it as hard, the graduation as hard as we want or as soft as we want and we can also choose where by dragging the green line where we want the graduation to start. So if we want the graduation to start here, okay, let's take this exposure down for example. Now let's say that I want to pull that down by one stop. Now again if I adjust the red bar I can make that a hard graduation or medium to soft to super soft as much as I want. So it's it's really really good. Let's just put it there for now. Let's take that up. Maybe let's take that up to 50%, 40 or even 25%. But also as I said we can also just the contrast in that area. 
we can adjust the highlights only in that area or the shadows or the whites or the texture all of these tools we can use but in that area only that we've selected so anything that we do now will only affect the area above and throughout our graduation area anything below this is untouched so this is a really really good tool okay so let's put that I'm going to put that back now I'm not actually going to use this Oop. okay now if you don't want to keep anything that you've done you just simply clear all and it's done okay so this is a great tool the other great tool is the adjustment brush here now what I can do what you can do with the adjustment brush is work on a particular area so let's say for example let's take that to 100 there we go let's say for example I, I just want to darken or lighten the the building here the church if I, say I want to darken or lighten the facade on this church I can use the adjustment brush sorry the adjustment brush now let's say I want to darken it so I say I want to take my exposure down 50% yeah now down here I can adjust the size of my brush so if I take that down to 5 there you go that's much smaller and I can also adjust the feathering so I can make the brush harder edged here or softer edge oh sorry I just did the wrong button here <laughs> sorry feather up so it's much see much softer or harder if I do like this you can see I've basically it's a much harder edge let's clear that if I take it to 50 yeah it's a bit softer around the edges clear that and if I make it here you can see it's even even softer okay clear that let's take that back down to 50 yeah. and I can even make it smaller yeah so here by making it smaller I'm still affecting the edges outside of the church itself so I want to go maybe even smaller down to about two there now I'm affecting just the church facade itself oh I've gone a bit over there so if you've gone a bit over you can always clear and go again so if I want to darken that there we go so it really gives you some fine adjustment it's really good clear that and the same if I wanted to make it brighter there we go now I'm brightening the church okay clear that and again I can use that tool individually with any of these features so um, let's say I wanted to increase the saturation on the hill okay. so if I take if I take this up to 10 okay. if I want to boost the saturation here just in this area here we can see if we clear that 
can see the difference. Color that again. So here I'm actually in this area on the hill and making it much greener. There we go. Okay, but of course I'm not going to do that for this particular image. Okay, so these are pretty much uh, the tools that you can use in Adobe Camera Raw. And as you can see, it's really not that difficult. It's very easy to use, but you can do so much with it. What I usually do then, once I've done what I want to do, I would then open the image. And I can also do uh, a little bit more in Photoshop. So even though you have these tools, they're they're quite blunt and limited so usually especially for the shadows and highlights when i've got a scene like this i usually then want to do more here so i open the shadows and highlights tool in photoshop okay i use i just increase the radius here so in this case because i really want to bring out the highlights in this sky and really bring out the these sun rays here so in this case I'm going to use the highlights tool here and we can also use the curves tool to add a bit more contrast but with a bit more control so I use I usually pull up the top right corner and pull down the bottom left corner to boost contrast there we go okay now all these tools that you've seen in Adobe Camera Raw are also available here you've got the exposure tool vibrance tool saturation everything it's all here so after you've done what you want to do in Adobe Camera Raw you can also use these tools to to make some extra finer adjustments to your image okay so I'll now show you uh, some of these tools with a couple of other photos so in this image here we've got uh, a scene that was exposed to the right because the the scene itself had a lot of bright highlights and not so much deep dark shadows so because of that and because it's been exposed to the right we have a big gap here where there's no information because there was no deep dark shadows recorded when taking the photo so that's where the blacks tool comes in when you have an image like this with a big gap you can then use the black tool to slide the histogram back towards the left to fill in that information and what it does as you can see before and after it brings back some of the contrast it darkens down some of those areas to bring in some more shadow detail and adds contrast to the image if let's say for argument's sake um, this image was then more exposed to the middle not exposed to the right let's say I exposed it to to give a histogram like this now we have a gap here on the left and we have a gap here on the right so first of all again we can pull this to the left to fill in this information here then we can pull the whites up to the right yeah, so we can then spread the histogram evenly across the whole scene like that but that's not how I shot it or how I wanted it so let's pull this back uh, I exposed it correctly so I brought out all of the whites and all of the bright highlights in my exposure so I don't need to make any adjustment there but you know if it was a little then I could brighten the white parts with this tool so it's really really uh, it's a really great tool you can do the same in Photoshop let's open 
If you didn't want to do it in Adobe Camera Raw, you can open it directly into Photoshop, go to Adjustments and Levels, and you can pull the, the, the shadow slider across to the start of the histogram here, and does the same thing. Okay, so I hope this has been useful and if you're not shooting in RAW now I hope you will start and I hope you will start using Adobe Camera RAW because it really is a great piece of software and by taking control of your editing process yourself you can do so much more and you can create much better pictures than your camera will automatically. Thanks for watching uh, please like and subscribe and uh, check out some of my other tutorials. Thanks again. Catch you later.